Hello, everybody. To go into the topic of today, real quick. Most people say you have to forget your problem. And today, really, I'm, I, I did do this live because one of my very good friends, and Aburo, in name of Karim, he sent him buy me birthday gift. Very thoughtful gift. He buy me one year subscription on Audible. Normally, me, ma, I no go ever buy subscription on Audible. But you know, cannot they like audio books? But why I like the Audible book, be say, the thing, the Audible subscription, be say, even books where I don't read before. Now, they, they, like, the books I want to read, I couldn't find them there really. Honestly, I couldn't really find many Pan Africanist books. I don't find any many books by African historians. You know? Now, so so you both when they talk about Africa, they'll get those kind of history, but those are our own way, our own people write for us. No day there. You know, even give me one idea. But I don't know that thing. But I found the record of the earth on the audible. I found this book on it by Franz Fanon. And you know, flight was the travel time to Australia, Lagos to Qatar, eight hours. Oh, my Qatar, yeah, my lord, she kata kata mbe, yeah, my lord, she kata kata ni kata, they woke. Oh my god, anyway. Eight and a half hours to Qatar, 13 hours to Adelaide, that's 21 hours flying, including all the waiting time in the airport. So, perfect time. And the book where I carry book to show you people the way you stress me, the way they stress me for Nigeria. I go carry book for Nigeria, so I won't read that. The book go day my hand, I go read that. One month, I don't finish one book. Before I learn for where they go, I don't finish my first book, just piece of my, I don't finish the book. Yeah. I say, which I go read again. Oh, I thought this book would take longer. Okay, my audible. Now I can't find. I can't listen to this book again. You know, it's good that you don't have to read it. You know, it's hard to go and read something again, honestly. But I can't listen to Franz Fanon. I they listen to Franz Fanon. Ah, oh my God! I I I, I feel disappointed with myself. I was feeling disappointed with myself. In case any of now we don't know Franz Fanon. Wait again, in case you, are, you don't like when I eat, look away now, look away now, look away now. <coughs> what is there? What is there? Wait, wait, I want to chop egg. Look away, look away. Look. See, and for me, let me tell you, if you are a Muslim and you are on this live, and you are looking away while I'm eating, you are committing sin. Because I will expect you to face this temptation. Ah, uh ah. -uh. noodles, you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, take. Uh, 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 you can't see yash now. How will you be able to resist yash? If you cannot resist noodles, you train your faith. Faith is like a muscle. Yes, belief is a muscle. You must constantly test it. You must test it, not all the time, but you must constantly, not all the time. There's a difference between all the time and constantly. Uh, that's why in this old pastors carrying bodyguard argument where they watch, it is, this is the dichotomy of revolution. Everybody must understand that in revolution, two things are always right at the same time. To be a true revolutionary, you must be able to see that two different things on the same topic can both be right at the same time even though they are in opposite and in contradiction your whole job is to resolve the contradiction anyway that pastor is carrying bodyguard is right that pastor should not have bodyguard is also right at the same time the issue is the application should pastor have bodyguard every time no it, me, I believe if pastor is going to church, if they go for church, he must not carry bodyguard. That is the powerhouse. That is the Krikum Krakum. That is the Indaboski Kabush. You know, Indaboski Bauba. No, I don't I can never forget. 
What's that the final power? Is in the Boski Bahos. Abi? Yes. This is not separate. Not be separate with the talk here. I'm not saying use the separate. No, don't use separate. Uh uh. Look away, look away. No, this is not separate. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. This is not Gandusa Ganduka. Mm -mm. We are talking of the Indaboski Bahus. Uh uh. You will kill me. But I will kill me. Yes, we Darling, please order a cup of coffee. Order a cup of coffee, I beg. Joe. They say they complain silently. You know, I here. I'm going to say now, I just order for coffee now. Coffee just won't appear. Mm, do you want that one now? Okay. But let me put milk and sugar. I don't get power for black coffee this morning. Uh -huh, they don't come. Young, you see? Why talking and eating at the same time? Why speaking wrong English on my life? Why? Why speaking wrong English? Why not know that you're supposed to use... Ah, you. Why are you? Why talking like like this? Why talking without sensing? <laughs> eh? Why talking without sensing, sir? Sir. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. After they talk, they go inside church. Pastor, suppose ah, uh -uh, if I go my Babalawo house. For Lambe, or oh, I take time. Say I won't go our headquarters for shoe state. Eh, if I don't make me vest, wait, my fellow she, those things what I do for those my enemy that time we send one go Chris Yard. We fire send a hair. Don't know a hair if I go headquarters. But say just normal, say I just go for a, a Lambe to go receive my messages and let them know what's happening in my life. Because you see, you're only to turn that with you and say, if this thing that has happened to me is just. Because you must also put yourself in the equation. Because some of them are going to do, but that's why I don't like our traditional power. Because most of them now, the things that they do, now they cause them for make the person do it all now. So now no one put yourself for the equation. I go, Jesus Christ, all oh my enemy, God, all oh my enemy. Wait, how did the person take become your enemy? How did this person become your enemy? Uh -huh. We want to know. So for our, you must tend that and say, if this is just ancestors. If this is just, judge us as you see fit. And leave the rest. Leave the rest. Leave the rest. You know, you can't go there with a, with a edited version. You can't go with edited version. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Anyway, where was I? Say, Pere, let us say... <laughs> Oh, Nigeria. I see, my father always say, we must be Yoruba. See, he was born as Yoruba because Yoruba is, he, see, Nigeria, this, I mean, so I see it every day. Like, where, why I don't understand? So, that's how we just stay alive. I could just do another country. I don't go know what they happen in Toto for Nigeria like this. I don't go know Sepere. I don't go know in that bus, in my house. <laughs> I rather die. <laughs> I don't die. I they tell you, uh -uh. see, I don't go no ginger. Shock. <laughs> ah. eh? But if I go, I can't say Baba Bala will get bodyguard. He padlock a, he padlock shrine. As with a padlock shrine, what would the padlock shrine for? Say that ah, I will be very skeptical. So when I see all these pastors with inside their own, ah, ah, inside the show, you say, where well, they could do one hand like this now. Is that the same show show? They could do one hand like this. Yeah. 
Nine people fall down. Do another hand like this. Yeah. Seventy people fall down. Do like this. Yeah. One whole row. I don't see where. Three people do like this. A whole row. Like say, give them a doke. <laughs> I don't know if they play street fight. A doke. One whole set. Not be row. Section fall down. You can't do that kind of place. You carry bodyguard, people with guns, they protect. Ah, 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 eh. That's a contradiction. You see? That is a contradiction that must be resolved. That is to look at the Christianity from a revolutionary perspective. Not all this, our argument. Eh. Both things can be right at the same time. Pastor need bodyguard. Maybe Tio Basili Agbara, Kinye on tap. On tap, no man. Chumo, Oti Kuroli Agbara, and sing. So maybe only lose guard. Uh -uh, you know, any nobody is above loose guard. Nobody is above loose guard. Is that why Jaws always guiding? Yes, for sure. But at the same time, Moti running no to above loose guard. Yes, yes. Look, look at uh, uh, in the uh, 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 Ngonu. I own Ngonu. I will be to feel guard. See, I will be to go to feel left hand. Yes, see. Uh -uh. I'm not saying he, he intentionally put it there. Oh, oh lose God, no. Nobody. <coughs> Nobody is above lose God. So I'm only understand. So the pastor on scene is not there for the strong house. You know, the strong room. Kusindi Abara. Presently, about one street has all kinds of principalities. I, I, I'm a Niger boy on the streets of this country. Sadly, they work out with bodyguard. I know it's in my eye to see. I know the kind of mind. I tell you, work out for these streets. Just street is wildlife, lions, tigers, snakes, rats, dogs, cats, all sorts, scorpion, <laughs> mosquito, mosquito. Say they ah, don't fuck with the streets here, fam. <laughs> don't fuck with the streets. <laughs> don't do what fuck with the streets. So I understand. It's also correct. I say, pastor, the. But I need protocol in case of lose guard. I'm fully, I understand it. So both sides of the argument, you know, is correct in some perspective. In the revolutionary perspective. You know? But if he's using it in the strong house, they mean, oh, it makes the strong house look weak. It's just on the side of, so I'm just saying, I just tell my Christians and brothers and sisters. Except the pastor is saying, God, among the flock, among the flock, he's not convinced. He's not convinced. The pastor boy is not convinced that the flock is flocking. <laughs> I don't think I don't do my barista exam. Oh, I don't say I don't pay the school fees. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I just miss my exam. Oh, 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 darling, make a taste the coffee, Abby. Hey, jibi, 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 jibi. Now, me pay. See, invest in your wife, <laughs> invest though. Oh la la. The French will say, Oh la la. Ah, oui, oui. Oh la la. Ah, oui, oui. I'm ready to open a coffee shop. Are we patronize? Are we <laughs> uh, you used to invest. Let's discuss. Yes, 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 yes. Where was I? Yes, the flock is not flocking. <laughs> Except the pastor is saying that the flock, he God is not confident that the flock is flocking. Ah, strong room, that one now. So that's my own take on it. So it's not the big man, is he, everybody? I want to read you. Better enjoy Indomie now. Because with the way things are going, Indomie is going to become the new fried rice. Indomie will become the new fried rice. Hmm. Where they will serve for party as delicacy. No, somebody say, you go China. No, 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 no. <coughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I'm a Japanese influenced guy. Now, Japan, I've never played in China. I never played for China, but I played in Japan numerous times. The band and I, I have to say, we have a kind of honest following in Japan. So, uh, but I never go there since 2020 because of COVID. My last time there was 2019. I'm always in Japan. Every year, I always have dates there. So,
So when I do my new album now, when I want to start to be promoted again, I'll be back. I love Japanese culture. It's very close to African culture in certain ways. Except the, um, uh, I think, I feel personally, where the Japanese put violence, you know, you know they, that's rated that high for African culture. Japanese people really see, they see the noble, the, the nobility in violence. You know, that's why they are very hard people to control. Very hard. They rather die. <laughs> Literally, rather die. I also have a godson that is Japanese, named after me. You know, uh, I met his father at a concert. He came, t he worked at the venue I performed. And he told me, uh, honestly, uh, after my show that I talked, I impacted him so much. He came to Nigeria, I said, and I put Kitu Bishop for Google Maps. <laughs> he came to visit me at the Kiloto. He, before I know he born, he named his son Go After Me. For me, those are the kind of those those kind of experiences are worth more than any award, any academy, any institution, any endorsement anybody can give you. That you can meet a fan that you impact that much in their life, not only to change the, for them to dance, but to change the way that they think, the way they live, you know. And then they name their son after you as a sign of you being that thing that even gave them the consciousness to understand what that meant. For me, it was. Uh, and I've had many of that kind of experience. Let me not blow my own horn. I can't tell you how many times people have told me, like, listen, I watch your show. You have changed my life. I'm different from today. <laughs> and that for me is why I do what I do. You know? That for me is why. Ah. So you not be saying these people won't block my life again. We don't be sweet like this. <clears throat> so, to the topic of the day, so as I re encounter this, this book by listening, I remember one part of the book where really touched me. And I go read them. You know. I go read that part too now. But I also want to read some part, one part of this book. You know, just to see, because I want us to know. Say, in the struggle for African liberation, for the struggle of our development, for us to get where we want to be, gentlemen and ladies, we must understand that there are two opposing ideas. The basic thing you must understand with that, there are two, and the two ideas cannot be reconciled with one another. Nobody can play both sides. It is either you are for the total liberation of African people or you are not. There is no two sides. In this issue of the liberation, is either you are for it or you are not. There's no space. There's no air. With mm -hmm. And there are people that have helped us to get to where we are today. We fight. We die. I want to read to you about France for no face. I want to do that before I can't forget. Because every issue that we face in Africa, these people saw it. They've spoken about it. They've written about it. They don't put the solution there. For us they've put the solutions but are we willing to implement are we willing to implement it every leader who we get for africa today their main job not to make sure they know implement them that's why they put them there. That is why they put them there. Because to liberate, Af to develop this Africa is not, uh, not be uh, magic. Not be magic. The issue we get, we say, we get leaders who they deceive us with modernization. 
They deceive us with modernization. They tell us say modernization, not development, which is a lie. That's what they shout about dollar rate. That's what they shout about dollar rate. Poor people will never see dollar save before. They shout about dollar rate. But how do you know the difference between you want dollar rate? You, well, what do you consign poor people with that one? Poor people are supposed to talk about health care, right? Transportation costs, right? School costs, housing. These are the issues affecting the people. But everybody is shouting dollar, dollar. Like say, in the change, hundred dollar every week. And when they say dollar, they affect the cost of things for our country. Then we must ask why dollar they affect the cost of things for our country. They will say that because Naira is tied to the dollar. Then you must ask them, why is Naira not free of the dollar? Are you for the total liberation of Africa or you are not? Why is dollar the master of Naira? Which you consign Naira with dollar? You must ask them. Because majority of Nigerians will never go to America. Majority of Nigerians will never step a foot on the shores of America. But those people that want to put their life, they are so weak, need America, we need American goods. How many Nigerians will ever wear original designer clothes? 65% of Nigerians live on less than a dollar, uh, less than two dollars a day. 65% less than two dollars. Another 15 uh, another 25%, no, no, another 35% to make it nine, uh, no, 65, the under 25% to make it 90. Under twenty five percent to make it ninety. Sorry, I, I'm still jet lag. My mathematics is not mathematical right now. But under twenty five percent to make it ninety percent are on one dollar a day. Say that those people won't buy Gucci. <clears throat> that they won't use iPhone. What access do those people have to any of those goods with dollar they affect? How many of them? None of them. None of them. And these are the majority of African people. If we are a truly democratic society not be the problem with the affect majority we would solve now the 10 percent waiting for dollar economy and then they control everything we do for this country all of us with this where they want to use iphone where they wear designer where they go up and down where they show ourselves we are the ones controlling talking everything about the country now everything is about us but 90 percent of our country will never in their life need any of these things that we are talking about And it is from them that the destruction of us will come. If we continue this rubbish, at some point, those people, you're going to see all this way that they talk, it's, pe, 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 pe. it makes, it is of, no, anyway. Franz Fanon is a man from, and now, this is how we must all be. These are the people that die for you. Hmm. He was born in 1925, and he died in 1961. What does that tell you? He lived. He lived. He lived less than 40 years. He was killed. Then they say he died of leukemia, but many evidence has come out since. Just like Nkrumah, also that they were poisoned. Franz Fanon was born in 1925. He died in 1961 at the age of 36. He was born in Martinique and studied medicine in France, specializing in psychiatry. Sent to a hospital in Algeria to work for the French government in the colonialist hospital for the white people. This is a black man from Martinique. After serving them, the, he joined the Algerian nationalist movement to fight for independence for the Algerian people. It was a military struggle. So Franz Fanon was a real militant. He left his hospital job for the white people and started to treat the African people first. 
then he joined their liberation. Franz Fanon specialized in psych psychiatry. So his psychoanalysis was gone. This book, The Wretched of the Earth, is a psychoanalysis of the relationship that Africans have with the colonialist system. The relationship that we have with our, our so-called nationalism and our national bourgeoisie, who he calls the petty bourgeoisie. You know, <laughs> he really have them for this book, you know. So try and, if you can get the, the book is kind of popular, The Wretched of the Earth, Franz Fanon. You should read it. Is that he also has a very great book called Black Skin, White Masks, which also psychoanalyzes the need that many of you black people have to be white. You know, that's why when I see many of you <laughs> talking about eh, eh, for the culture, which culture? Which culture they talk about? Culture is symbol. You don't need to explain your culture to me. If I see you, I should know your culture. And I will tell you, if I be alien, if I'm an alien, that they drop in this uh, planet, and I see 90% of black people, I will think that they are, they are white. If I don't know that there is racism, when I see Europeans and I see 90% of black people, I will think, oh, these people are one crew. I be you, people are one people. You know, just get different color, but you are one culture, Abi. The symbol of beauty that all black people practice is white. Is every symbol of beauty, of attraction, of value is white. But you can't shout for the culture because you are black. Your blackness is not African culture. Oga, madam. Put up some African symbols if you dare. Let us see you with some true African symbols on your body. Then I understand you. Let your hair be African. Let your dressing be African. Not only for show. Let it be a part of you. Abi? What is for this culture we are shouting? There are more LV signs in any music video that I watch. There are more Gucci signs. There are more, there are more Gucci symbols, Mercedes symbols, Louis Vuitton symbols than any African symbol. Your blackness is not African culture. Period. So black and white masks really, really shows that. What are the things, is the things you value, your desire, is what determines the symbols you want to project. What is our symbol for wealth? What does it mean to be a wealthy African? Is it that you are impacting positively in Africa or you are just consuming European culture? Success in Africa is nothing but the consumption of European culture. How much of Europe can you afford? That's the question we ask ourselves every day as Africans. In any way, shape, or form, who you be, that who you be. It's in that book, oh, I swear that Frank Adot, but he didn't say it as who you be. Like, who do you think you are? That statement just, are you whiter than me? That's what they mean. Because the ones that oppress with gun, we get gun, where the police go beat you. Which people first bring police to the beat black people? Which people first they use police to beat black people? Not your Yibo. The police, using, using police against your brother or sister is as white as it gets. Going to bring uh, uh, military people to bust your enemies is as white as it gets in Africa. I be your who you be, me say, you get money, reach me. That's white as fuck, too. I be, me say, you get Gucci, reach me, Louis Vuitton, reach me. You get, that's what we say. This is our culture. This is the culture, sorry, not our culture. This is the culture we talk about, and it's white. <laughs> sorry. Is white. Moving in convoy among your people is white. Ah. Now colonialism bring them and you people sustain it. That's why they always say you must forget your problem. I want you to forget because if we forget our problem, how will it be solved? And when people are benefiting from your problem not being solved, all the money for the poor people problem in this country. Hmm? So all these people that you see, and they tell you, they are only issue. Let me see. Maybe that, this analyzing them will be topic for another day. But make a tell you now what Franz Fanon talk. Remember, the man died in 1961. So this book was written, um, uh, Return of the Earth was written in 56. 
I believe 52 or 56, let me be sure. Just uh, um, before the uh, Algerian uh, independence. Yes. So the book came out in 61, the year he died. But I'm trying to find the year he wrote it. Yeah? Because he wrote it before he died, before the book came out. You know, he wrote it just, yes, 1950, I think it's 1956. Anyway, the year Algeria gained their independence is the year he wrote it. Or the year, the year they declared war or something. But I know the book came out the year he died in 61, the book itself. Anyway, so as far back as 50, some, 1950 something, at this, you must write the book before the book comes out. Book came out in 61. That means he wrote these things in 50 something about these people. Now, you as a Nigerian, who we'll did for Nigeria together like this? I want to hear this thing with this guy talk for 1950 something because you know, many of them are going to say, Felana prophet, Felana is a prophet. No, Felana, African man. I know what you, mean to, you mean to be African man to concern yourself with African things. You can't claim you be an African man while you are concerning yourself with every other thing except the things that are African. When you know everything about everything in this world, but you know nothing about Africa, you are not the people that will liberate Africa. Then, what did Fala they talk that time was happening then, there and then. But you all had access to these people, some enjoyment nobody won here. Now, as they touch on and they say there's no prophecy in it. Now, analysis, straight up political and social analysis. So, in certain regions of Africa, in certain regions of this part now is the relationship between all, uh, our uh, our elite and us, the bourgeoisie and the people, African bourgeoisie. In certain regions of Africa, bleating paternalism towards black and the obscene idea drawn from Western culture that the black race is impermeable to logic and science reign in all their nakedness. There are some places where black minorities are confined in semi-slavery, which justifies the caution, even distrust, that the countries of black Africa manifest towards the countries of white Africa. It is not unusual for a citizen of black Africa walking in a city of white Africa to hear children call him nigger or to find the authorities speaking to him in pidgin. Unfortunately, alas, unfortunately, alas, it is all too likely that students from Black Africa enrolled in schools not of not of the Sahara will be asked by their schoolmates whether people live in houses in their home countries. Whether they, oh, sorry, I'm starting too late. This one linked to another thing. This one is just uh, northern and anyway. Make a note. Let me jump to what I want to say. As we have seen. The inadequacies of the bourgeoisie are not restricted to economics. Achieving power in the name of narrow-minded nationalism, in the name of the race, and in spite of its magnificently worded declarations totally void of content, irresponsibly wielding phrases straight out of Europe's treaties on ethics and political philosophy, the bourgeoisie proved itself incapable of implementing a program with even a minimum humanist content. When it is strong, when it organizes the world on the basis of its power, a bourgeoisie does not hesitate to maintain a pretense of universal democratic ideas. An economically sound bourgeoisie has to be faced with exceptional circumstances to force it to disregard its humanist ideology. Although fundamentally racist, the Western bourgeoisie generally maintains the mask of this racism by multiplying the nuances, thereby a thereby enabling it to maintain intact its discourse on human dignity in all its magnanimity. Western bourgeoisie has erected enough barriers and safeguards for it to fear no real competition from those it exploits and despises. Western bourgeoisie racism towards the nigger and the towel head is a racism of contempt, a racism that minimizes but the bourgeoisie ideology that proclaims all men to be essentially equal manages to remain consistent with itself by urging the subhumans of the, the subhuman to rise to the level of Western humanity that it embodies. What does this thing say? It says, this our national bourgeoisie, 
the national bourgeoisie is inaccurate because it copies Oyibo bourgeoisie too much. That basically all they want to be is white. That for them, that is what it means. And even though the white people that they are listening to, now this is the, in this part, he says, even these white people, they are racist. They don't like anybody, but they claim they, everybody is equal. So what must that mean? That they must, for them to behave like that and think at the same time that everybody is equal. How can you be a racist and you, and you are the same one that says everybody is equal? So what does it mean? It means you think those people you are racist to are not human beings. So the national bourgeoisie that believes in whiteness also in a way believes that on his own, if he just stays as African, he is not human. That's why he must try to be white. He must try to behave and be quoting white philosophy. The things white people say, the way white people do, eat white, how white people eat, dress in their clothes, so that he can be equal. He is searching for that white equality. Do you understand? The racism of the young national bourgeoisie is a defensive racism. Now, this is them. A racism based on fear. Basically, it does not differ from common tribalism or even so. That's why this tribalism, you know, that is the racist of is that our useless elites trying to be racist that they create all the, the things that the colonialists said about black people. Yoruba people too dirty. Yoruba people they clean themselves. Outside people too dirty. Outside people native. Even people you can't trust them. Even people are shady. shady. You see these things. You don't know your history. These are the exact same words. You both said about all black people. This is what white people say about all of us together. Black people cannot be trusted. Black people are rapists. Black people are thieves. Black people are lazy. Black people are... So the elite, you know, to sound white, they begin sharing. Oh, you people are dumb to fall for these things. If you fall for these things, you must be dumb. The racism of the young national bourgeoisie is a defensive racism. A racism based on fear because he's afraid of his western master basically it does not differ from common tribalism or even rivalry between clans or confraternities it is easy to understand why wait have i have i passed it no i have not passed it sorry sorry wrong place again let me go the national bourgeoisie also proves incompetent in domestic politics and institutionally in a certain number of underdeveloped countries, the parliamentary rules are fundamentally flawed. Economically powerless, unable to establish coherent social relations based on the principles of class domination, the bourgeoisie chooses what seems to be the easiest solution, the single party system. It does not possess as yet that ease of conscience and serenity that only economic power and control of the state system can give it. It does not establish a reassuring state for the citizen, but one which is troubling. Now, in Nigeria, we might not have experienced that single party system, but what we experienced was military dictatorship, which is basically single party ruling. The military was the party. Basically, the, the military was the party, and they ruled for a long time. Now, the rich are the party. Don't get to see. I even know still believe that we have a that we have a democracy yet. What we have is only the rich people ganging themselves in different gangs, and every time we choose one of them and put there all over the world, that's what we are still doing. We the people have not really represented ourselves. We never get chance to organize, represent ourselves. Now rich people will just gather themselves every time. Divide themselves for different groups, they form rival. Why they are all, all of them, bar none, are all united on the boards of the corporations who they make the rules for to run the country. All of them is in the corporations that they all work for, that the decisions are made. Why they come outside and act in our politics as if they are quarreling. So now, in describing the elites of Africa. Franz Fanon says this. I'm going to hear this part. And tell me how this thing that he has said in 1950 something, 56 or 58, I'm not sure. How these words are not almost prophetic. This bourgeoisie which has unreservedly and enthusiastically adopted the intellectual reflexes characteristics of the metropolis uh, the metropolis 
you know, we then were the colonial, uh, were the colonial states. Our, uh, the capital of our uh, home, Africa was a satellite nation of our home nations in Europe. So, for, for example, Nigeria now, uh, Lagos now satellite, our metropolis now London. London was the main capital where everybody look up to, to go from this bush. When you qualify, when they don't unsavage you, after you have been unsavaged and they've removed every ounce of savage from you in the colonial side, you can now go to the metropolis. So that's what metropolis here means. You know, before some of you think he's talking about, uh, before some of them begin to say, they talk about uh, where Superman from come. Well, whether that Superman city, no, it's not that metropolis. You understand? Uh -huh. I know. I know our education system in Africa is very bad. Maybe we, ah, why the man they talk about uh, Superman now? Uh? <laughs> anyway, I digress. The bourgeoisie, which has unreservedly and enthusiastically adopted the intellectual reflexes characteristic of the metropolis, which has alienated to perfection its own thought and grounded its consciousness in typically foreign notion has difficulty swallowing the fact that it is lacking in the one thing that makes a bourgeoisie money. I repeat, Franz Fanon's words again. This, uh, uh, which has alienated to perfection its own thought and granted its consciousness in typically foreign notions has difficulty swallowing the fact that it is lacking in the one thing that makes a bourgeoisie money see I no, we don't have money oh see all these people doing all this is nothing sir I keep telling people Apple alone is worth 1.7 trillion dollar that's one company alone in America. They have what they call for, for Fortune 500 companies. One of the Fortune 500 alone is worth 1.7 trillion. Do you know how many African countries at present? You, countries, not companies. Do you know how many whole African countries, including the company, the citizens, every? Do you know how many countries you must join together in Africa to have 1.7 trillion dollar? They don't have the money. That's why, anyway, let me, see, let me look at those spoil the verse. Uh -huh. One thing, money. The bourgeoisie of the underdeveloped countries is a bourgeoisie in spirit only. It has neither the economic power nor the managerial dynamism. Or the managerial dynamism, they cannot run anything. I just, nor the scope of ideas to qualify it as a bourgeoisie. They lack the ideas. It's showing. It's showing. It's showing. Uh -huh. Consequently, it is in its early stages and remains a bourgeoisie of civil servants. <laughs> because I keep telling you people that everything they shout, all African greatness as it is, all the African greatness, this one is great, this one is first to do this, this one is first to do that, this one is, is in white employment. All, as we speak, is in white, everything that is black greatness is nothing but white employment. He scored 50 goals for his club last season, is white employment. He said 100 level, is white, is, he get endorsement from this point, is uh, white employment. Employ, we are all employees, civil servants, and serve That is where we are. That is the fact. Bourgeoisie of civil servants, we are the best at serving. Right? That's what we are trying to claim. Africans, that's our glory. We are the best at serving. <laughs> we can help you drink more, sell more of your drink. We can help you kick more of your balls. We can help you jump as high as you want. We can help you build any robot. We can help you, except we cannot help ourselves. We will help you. Just pay us. We will not help because nobody will pay us to help ourselves. Uh -huh. That's the catch. Nobody will pay you to help yourself. Mm. Nobody will pay you to help yourself. So, because nobody will pay these fucking African elites to help themselves, they rather do what? Work for Europeans to pay them. Because helping yourself, nobody will pay you. Uh -huh. They will, they, they don't want to chop. They, they don't want to chop.
whatever confidence and strength it possesses will derive from the position it occupies in the new national administration. Given time and opportunity by the authorities, it will succeed in amassing a small fortune that will reinforce its domination but it will still prove incapable of creating a genuine bourgeois society with all the economic and industrial consequences this supposes. See, no matter the they will still, but because of that flaw, so it is not error, it is not by mistake, it is not because uh, she won't talk. Him. This 1951, uh, 1958. Now in our 56, now in France, Fanon don't talk this thing. This is 2024. Have they proven him wrong? Where is, what have they done? What have they done? This national bourgeoisie, from the outset, is geared toward immediate activities. Its power base lies in its business sense and petty trading. It is in its capacity to grab commissions. Sorry, I'm not reading it right. I'm missing the punctuations. Let me read it again. The national, this, the national bourgeoisie from the outset is geared toward immediate activities. Its power base lies in its business sense and petty trading. In its capacity to grab commissions. It is not its, it is not its money that is working, but its sense of business. It does not invest and cannot achieve that accumulation of capital needed for the formation and expansion of an authentic bourgeoisie. At this rate, it will take centuries for it to set up the rudiments of industrialization. In any case, it will come up against the implacable opposition of the former metropolis, which will have taken every possible precaution in this framework of neocolonialist agreements. That's what we are facing. That is what we are facing. That they will be paid, that in order to industrialize, they will be paid to import and export. That's what they are all doing. Basically, that is what he says in the North. Now, on us, how is this mindset formed? How is this mindset formed? Franz Fanon talks to us in the beginning that these are the people, you know, he, he, talks, he talks to us. And I want us to see this thing, what he says about the mindset of the colonized and see if we are falling into this trap. Real quick before I close this live. Uh -huh. Real quick. Oh, and I don't highlight them, but I didn't pin the page. Uh -huh. My God, that's why I like to pin these things down. See, I didn't pin it down. Now I've lost it. You know, I'll post it on my story. I have to post it on my story, guys. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry because it shows that, and that thing is so that his brother is his wallet. You know, the only thing he believes in is his scheming. And we must rise and be above that. I would really love to, to say it in his words. I would really love to say it in his words. But another time. Another time. Anyway, thanks for joining this uh, live today again. Uh, we'll, we'll do it another time. Only us can so Only us. Only us. Only us. Only us can solve our problem. Yes, colonial, not colo as in 